Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm trying to do something a little bit different. I'm gonna try to incorporate my thoughts in videos about issues happening in Hollywood and also with movie news. And I thought that the perfect time to start would be right now, considering that, I hate to say scandal, but I'll say issues with Blake Lively have just been going wild the past couple of weeks. And I feel like this is something I wanna talk about. I want to address. I haven't really prepared anything. I got to be honest. I just got done filming a separate video and I just want to express my thoughts about this issue and kind of start a conversation. And if you enjoy this content, I will continue to do more of them. So let's talk about Blake Lively and what's happening. What is going on with Blake Lively? So Blake Lively, I have simply known her as Ryan Reynolds' spouse. I've seen her in a couple of prior movies, but I've never been a hardcore fan of hers. I never watched Gossip Girl. That was not my jam back in the day. And of course, that's what she's pretty much most known for. And she did make the transition to movies. And currently right now, She's in a film, we all know, It Ends With Us, and the film is extremely popular. And this is kind of like her moment right now, because she is a big part of this movie. Not only is she starring in the film, but she's also a producer on the project. But here's the thing. Over the past couple of weeks, even going back to about a month or so, people have started to notice some friction going on between Blake Lively and the director slash co-star of the film, Justin Baldoni. Now, I'm not going to go into full-on great detail because I'm pretty sure most of you already know kind of the situation of what is going on. I'm just going to do a brief synopsis. So Blake Lively really wanted to be a part of this movie project and Justin Baldoni was already signed on. He owns the rights for the book to be turned into a movie. He owned that. So he wanted to direct. And I think the author of the book, I could be wrong, but I believe the author of the book suggested, why not, why don't you co-star in the movie? Why don't you play the character of Ryle, if I'm remembering correctly? You play the character of Ryle opposite Blake Lively. I feel like that would be really great. So that's what ended up happening. And pretty much people were starting to notice after the film was done wrapping, after everything was coming together in post-production, fast forward to the premiere of the film. Now, TikTokers were making, you know, posts on TikTok and noticing that when they were on the red carpet together, they were not being photographed together, which is kind of odd. But with the subject matter of It Ends With Us surrounding domestic violence, maybe that was done on purpose. So maybe some people were kind of overly looking into it. I'm not really sure. But then it was further noticed that other cast members were not taking photos with Justin Baldoni. They were away from him on the red carpet. He was alone, I think, with his wife on the red carpet. And that was it. And everyone else was kind of avoiding him like the plague. And also they were unfollowing him on Instagram. And when you unfollow someone on Instagram, it's all over the place. It's a big, huge deal. So that was like kind of our, our little like, not our, because I'm not invested in this like other people are. But that was their, there we go. That was their first couple of signs that something was not right between Blake Lively and Justin Baldoni. And then about a week later, more information was coming out. She was saying that he insulted her because of her weight or something, because he wanted to know how much does she weigh. She thought that he was fat shaming her when in actuality, he just wanted to know because he had a back injury and he wanted to prepare himself. Like these two were just like kind of going at it like crazy about like little instances and little teeny tiny issues that just didn't really seem important. And then Justin Baldoni 
hired a crisis PR firm. And that's a big deal. That's pretty much doing damage control because what's happening is that Justin Baldoni is not as known as the team up, the Hollywood power couple, as I mentioned in a couple of weekend watches ago. Not, he's not as well known as Blake Lively and Ryan Reynolds. So to go up against a very well-known couple in Hollywood, he did the right thing and he hired a crisis PR firm to kind of like smooth things out and kind of explain his side of the story. Because I feel like there may be some facts coming out that maybe we just don't even know yet. I don't know. I'm not really sure. But there's a lot of bad blood going on between the two. I feel like Blake Lively with this project kind of overstepped just a little bit. Now, granted, she is the star. As I said, we all know this. She also is a producer, which as a producer, you are involved, but she has to remember that Justin Baldoni is the director of the project. At the end of the day, it's his choice. He makes decisions on what he wants to do for his movie. Yes, she can have input. They, they should be working together and making decisions. And it shouldn't be a battle of, you know, my cut should be the cut that goes to theater. No, my cut, my cut. Like, it shouldn't be like that. But that's how it ended up being because I feel like Blake Lively's ego has kind of inflated just a little bit because she knew this movie was going to be a success. She felt it in her bones. She knew it was a very popular book. She knew that like all the Swifties were reading this book and she's like BFFs with Taylor Swift. So she knew the film was going to be a success. And on top of that, we're adding in the Ryan Reynolds effect as well. And what I mean by that is unbeknownst to the screenwriter of the film, Blake's husband, Ryan Reynolds, re rewrote an entire scene, the rooftop scene that happens very early on in the movie. He rewrote that entire scene himself, never even let the screenwriter know what they were doing. Blake and Ryan, pretty now I could be wrong, but this is information that I'm getting off of various sources of social media, Twitter, articles, various different sources. I could be wrong. They could be wrong. Who knows? But this is what I'm going by. Blake and Ryan just completely alienated that screenwriter, went behind her back, rewrote that scene. Ryan rewrote that scene all by himself. And that what was what was filmed and put into the movie. If I was that screenwriter, I would have been so offended. First of all, why is Ryan Reynolds coming in and re like rewriting anything? He's not involved in the movie. Yet yeah, you're married to the lead actress, but that doesn't mean you have the right to come in and get creative. Is he a producer on the project? Is he a co-writer? I don't think he's involved in any kind of way like that. I mean, like I said, I could be wrong. I should have looked up this information before I hopped on camera here, but... Like I said, I'm just flying by the seat of my pants right now. I'm rambling. I don't even know if I'm making sense right now. So that pretty much in a nutshell is the conflict of what is going on between Justin Baldoni and Blake Lively. Pretty much to sum everything up with that issue, it's not a good look for Blake Lively to be acting this way, to kind of have this ego about herself. It just, it doesn't come off well, and going forward in her career, people are going to remember this and people are going to say, well, are Blake Lively and Ryan Reynolds a package deal? Like if I hire Blake Lively for my movie, is Ryan just going to come in and start directing my movie or rewriting a scene or producing a project? They even had their editor from Deadpool and Wolverine edit it ends with us. Those are two completely different movies. You need a different editor. Like they just wanted to completely control this project. It was kind of ridiculous. I mean, I know she's the star and a producer. 
you want to be hands on, but let like she should have just directed the movie herself at this point. Why didn't Ryan Reynolds? Well, maybe he was too busy with Deadpool and Wolverine. I mean, I can understand that, but like, I don't know. It's just a lot of conflict, a lot of conflict going on. Now, another part of this kind of spinning off from everything that I just mentioned is whenever the stars, these two stars of the movie are interviewed, they come across in very different ways. And what I mean by that, whenever they're promoting the movie on like red carpet situations, you have Justin Baldoni, who is praising Blake Lively and praising the women, you know, the women performances in the movie and, you know, never forgetting the fact what the movie is about, the core message. And he's always talking about domestic violence survivors. And if he can convince one woman to, or man, whoever, to get out of a bad situation, he has done his job well. I mean, he just, he's saying all the right things things which is important he should be saying that then you have Blake Lively who's been asked who is getting the same questions thrown at her and her response is talking about her brand new hair care line what are we doing here that's not appropriate I feel like she has like some kind of chip missing in her brain Remember when Jennifer Aniston accused Brad Pitt and Angelina of not having like a sensitivity chip back in the day? I feel like that's what's missing in Blake Lively's head right now. The sensitivity chip is gone. Like logic, logic and reasoning is gone. It's just not there. She's saying the most inappropriate things at the time when you're being asked about domestic violence and the issues and and you're talking about your hair care line no one cared I, don't, I didn't even know she had a hair care line no one cares and you know what I heard that her hair care line sucks like no one no one likes it everyone that's using it doesn't really care for it so I don't know maybe that's why she's heavily promoting it but it's not appropriate in that moment like she's just not thinking right now she's being extremely selfish is the problem she's being extremely selfish there's another fact where she just is avoiding talking about she's very bratty very bratty now i'm going to talk about two interviews one interview you guys know what i'm going to talk about this is the interview that is like kind of going around the world right now well maybe not that much but kind of I'm going to save that for last. That's the last thing I'm going to talk about. So there was another interview that she had correlating with It Ends With Us. And the interviewer, you're probably going to be familiar with this one. The interviewer, it was her and her other co-star. I don't remember his name, but it's like it, Atlas. He plays the character of Atlas in the movie. So her other male co-star. So they're both sitting on a couch together and this interviewer is asking her a very serious question, asking her how you would, you know, interact with someone if they came up to you on the street and they started talking about domestic violence and the issues and the movie, like how would you deal with that in that situation? And her first instinct is to go to sarcasm. And just be so sarcastic and she's just sitting there and she's like well what do you want me to do like are we think are we doing this like theoretically or logically like do i give them my home address like who talks like that just answer the question why don't you just say you know this is you know i'm so happy that the movie affected you in a certain way Oh, you escaped the situation. I'm so happy. I'm so happy that your life is better now. Anything, anything would have been better than the stupid, <laughs> the stupid answer that she gave. Well, are we talking logically or theoretically? And then she's like, well, this is my, I'm like a Libra. Well, I'm a Libra, so I shouldn't say that. She's, I think she said, I'm a Leo. So I, I think a certain way. Her answer is just so inappropriate. It's not, you, 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 
you just don't do that. You just don't, that's not how you talk. You don't talk that way. You wouldn't talk to someone on the street that way. If you did, you'd sound like an ass. Like, it's just, it's so bad. It's not a good look. Not a good look at all. But the final issue that I'm going to talk about is the interview that everyone is talking about. Now, this interview that everyone's talking about was from, I believe, eight years ago. And the person, the woman who was actually doing the interview with Blake Lively and Parker Posey, by the way, who I love Parker Posey, but after I saw this interview, it really, really disappointed me. And my love for Parker Posey went down a lot because I felt like Blake Lively and Parker Posey together in this interview just really got a case of mean girl syndrome and they attacked this interviewer. Why? I don't know. I felt like the interviewer asked a very reasonable question. Obviously, these two were starring in a movie together and I believe it was a period piece. So the interviewer asked an inquiring question about the costumes. What's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with that. Blake Lively, for some reason, just instantly took offense to that and said, well, would you ask a male the same thing? And her and Parker Posey just immediately started interacting with each other like the interviewer was not even in the room. It was one of the rudest it was one of the rudest pieces of footage I've ever seen in my life. I've seen a lot of celebrity interviews and this one, I've never seen an interaction like that before. The interviewer was just sitting there watching the two of them interact and they were being so obnoxious, so mean girl. It was shocking, borderline shocking. And it really makes you wonder is this the true Blake Lively? Is this really how she is? Because let's remember that this footage was from eight years ago. And if she was acting this way eight years ago, is it really that hard to believe that she's the same way now? And if this really is the true character of Blake Lively, I don't want nothing to do with it. I will have nothing to do with her career. I will not go to any of her movies anymore. I mean, not that I ever did. I wasn't like ever seeking out her films, but I will not support her. I will not support a celebrity that treats people like garbage, that treats people that they are beneath them, that they're asking asinine questions. And on top of that, here's the other piece of that interview that really kind of ticked me off. So I think at that point, Blake Lively was fairly newly pregnant or something. And the interviewer complimented her on her, you know, her baby bump or something. And I think Blake Lively said the same thing to the interviewer. I don't even think she was pregnant. Like She really just dished out a massive insult to the interviewer. And you could tell in the interviewer's face, she was really, really hurt by that comment and throughout the entire duration of that interview she was so uncomfortable and in fact she posted the entire interview on her youtube channel because she does have a youtube channel she recently posted that entire interview and the title of the video was i think along the lines of the interview that made me want to quit or something like it was so bad she wanted to stop her career because of this interview. That's insane to me. That is so insane. How one short experience could affect someone so much. And here's Blake Lively, totally oblivious, totally oblivious, doesn't care. She doesn't care. She, she comes off to me as she's just naturally sarcastic. Like that's her go-to. That's how she behaves because when you see her in all these different situations that is what you see first you see the sarcasm you hear it in her voice and the way that she words things it's extremely sarcastic I mean I don't think that she's doing this on per I don't know I mean 
Is she doing this on purpose? I don't know. I hope not. Because if she is, I don't know how Ryan Reynolds is married to her. Because Ryan Reynolds comes off as a very happy, obviously funny, you know, just goofing off kind of guy. You know, like how can you be married to this woman that is like missing the sensitivity chip and treating interviewers like garbage? It's, it's like, how do you see that and marry that? <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of confusing to me. But... Obviously, this is a part of Blake's personality that's been around for a while because, like I said, that last interview that I was talking about was eight years ago. And if you were acting like that eight years ago and you're still kind of acting like it now because her ego is inflated because of how well this movie is doing, I don't know. It's not going to be good for the future of her career as I mentioned earlier in the video, because people are going to see this. They're going to see the interviews. They're going to see how she's acting on the red carpet. And are producers and directors in the future going to want to work with her knowing the attitude and the sarcasm and the rudeness that comes along with that? I don't know. I'm not so sure. She may have to just be happy with being Mrs. Ryan Reynolds. I don't really know. So I just think that this is part of Blake Lively's personality. I'm not really sure if it's going to get any better or any worse. We're just going to have to see what happens. But that's kind of like my take on this entire situation. I hope it made sense to you. Like I said, this is me kind of just rambling and explaining the situations and giving my reaction. But I personally think Blake Lively's behavior is horrific. I would never, if I was a celebrity in her shoes, motorcycle, if I was a celebrity in her shoes, having this great moment in my career, my husband is having a fantastic moment with Deadpool and Wolverine. I have four children that are all healthy and fantastic. Everything is on the up and up. I would never ever think about just being rude flat out rude like being sarcastic would not be the first reaction if someone is asking me a very basic question my mind wouldn't be promoting other products that have my name slapped on it I would be wanting to talk about my current project and the message that the movie is trying to send I don't know I just think her brain is just not working right right now. I, I don't know. That's the best way to say it. Her brain is off and it's just not a good look for her and her career moving forward. That's all I got to say. End of subject. This is something that I've been wanting to talk about for about a week now. I'm not really sure if it came across well. Hopefully it did. Hopefully you guys found this entertaining enough that I will do more. I'm thinking about talking about Joaquin Phoenix's situation. Is it going to affect the success of Joker 2? If you guys are interested in that video, please comment down below and let me know. Thank you so much for watching me ramble on camera. You know that's what I love to do. I love to ramble on camera. Don't forget to like and subscribe before you leave and I'll see you next time.